Will Bitcoin continue to rise? Should we go long now? If you're interested in knowing more about this, please keep watching. Bybit is one of the best exchanges I've ever used. It provides great market depth, a smooth user experience, and an impeccable interface. Right now, if you complete the KYC and deposit 100 US dollars, you will instantly receive a gift of a Bitcoin contract position worth 1,000 US dollars. This is completely free, and once you meet this condition, you can choose to go long or short. They will directly open a Bitcoin contract position worth 1,000 US dollars for you. All right, let's get back to the current market situation. We can see that yesterday's rally was very strong, and we have actually experienced a continuous upward trend. From the lowest point until now, with a rise of 18%, equivalent to over 4,500 US dollars. The most important thing for us right now is to determine whether this upward movement is a rebound from the drop since 31,000 or the start of a new bullish trend. At this point, we can use a tool called Fibonacci to see at what level it rebounds, but it's hard to say if it's a rebound. If this upward movement is only a rebound from the drop from around 31,000 to 24,500, then it is a rebound. But if it is forming a new bullish trend, we can't call it a rebound. Now, if we look at this rally, from the perspective of Fibonacci retracement, we can find that the current upward movement has reached the 0.618 level, which is a crucial level. If this is a rebound, then 0.618 is the maximum level it can reach. If it goes higher, for example, reaching 0.786, if Bitcoin were to retrace to 0.786 in the upcoming market movement, it would strongly suggest that the recent uptrend is not merely a bounce. Reaching the 0.786 level would indicate that the entire previous downtrend has been resolved. Defining it as a rebound would be far-fetched. For the bulls, the most favorable factor is not the price level but the strength of the volume. As you can see, let me draw it for you. In yesterday's video, we talked about the requirements for volume when it comes to a breakthrough. What's the required position? There is a clear standard. Look at the previous upward movements. Like this one, this one, and also this one. The volumes have been gradually shrinking and declining. The crucial factor, volume. And it's standard. Initially, the price was consistently moving downward continuously. Even when the price was going up, the volume was continuously declining. But at this point, during the oscillation process, we witnessed a significant surge in volume. Therefore, at the very least, if we are to establish a bullish trend, we must meet this level of volume intensity. We can observe that the current volume intensity matches the standard we set yesterday, which we discussed in the previous video. Of course, yesterday was before the breakout, and we mentioned that for the daily chart, we must have this specific volume standard before we can say that this segment indeed has the potential for a new rally, we can see that it has clearly reached this standard now. Furthermore, an advantageous factor for the bulls is the strength and duration of this upward movement. You can notice that if we are experiencing a rebound, how would it typically unfold? What is the reasonable pattern? We have a rapid decline, followed by a longer rebound period, with a smaller rebound margin and then the price movement continues downward again, and the descent is rapid. However, how is the current trend unfolding? Let's visualize it with some data. In the previous downward movement, it dropped from around 31,000 to 24,500, and it took us 61 days. Yes, 61 days. But for this rebound segment, we have only spent six days. Yes, just six days. It is only one-tenth of the previous downward movement, and we have already reached a higher position in this upward movement than the 0.618 level. So, it's evident that we can observe that this market phase, the decline and the subsequent rise, is actually more bullish in nature. If it were more bearish, on the other hand, we would expect the upward movement to take more time. However, the current market conditions are completely the opposite. Now, let's look at the volume performance. During the decline and the subsequent rise, if we were in a bearish trend, we would clearly notice a significant dominance of bears. Especially during a distribution phase, we would see a strong supply from bears. 
and each bullish rebound would be very weak, without any significant surge in volume. But when we observe the volume, we can see that during the current market phase, we have witnessed two significant surges in volume, and both of them were associated with bullish activity. Of course, the most recent one was a doji candle. So it's not as significant. But the previous one seems promising. It's a large bullish candle with a very small lower shadow. The candlestick's real body is solid. Also, it's accompanied by sufficient volume. On the other hand, the bearish side has not shown significant strength. Hence, you can observe that during this upward movement, considering the aforementioned points, the bulls are regaining their dominance and the bearish momentum has been weakened. Why is that? It's because this level is the end of this bearish trend. Before breaking above this level, the bears had a chance to continue their dominance. What does this mean? It means that after the decline, there was a possibility of a direct continuation of the bearish phase. However, after breaking above 28,500, such a scenario is no longer viable. Even I believe that after we have experienced such a breakthrough and witnessed such volume performance, it would take some time before we can expect a bearish trend to develop in the medium to long term. At most, we may see some oscillations. In terms of a more bearish friendly scenario, the most probable outcome would be a period of oscillation rather than a direct bearish trend. All right, let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum has also seen an increase. Although not as significant as Bitcoin, its volume hasn't been as impressive either. However, Ethereum is currently in a crucial position, touching the downward trend line. It's worth noting that this trend line is valid, with three previous touch points. And now we have a fourth one. Similar to Bitcoin's situation yesterday, Ethereum is preparing for a breakthrough. Furthermore, the critical S slash or reversal level below has been successfully held. When considering whether to focus on Bitcoin or Ethereum, we can also observe the Bitcoin dominance chart. Well, over a period of time, Bitcoin dominance has been showing an upward trend, especially since the recent bull market began. This indicates that Bitcoin has been performing stronger than Ethereum during this bull market. Therefore, when considering long positions, it's advisable to prioritize Bitcoin, while for short positions, it's recommended to focus on Ethereum, other altcoins, and whatnot. Considering the current situation, with Bitcoin dominance breaking out of the box pattern and reaching new highs in over 700 days, it becomes clear that Bitcoin should be the preferred choice for long positions. All right, thank you. You're welcome to like and share my videos and subscribe to my channel. Turn on the little bell button to show me your greatest support.